greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you, and welcome to another episode of Matchmaking Academy, the show where you are the star for all the wrong reasons. But don't worry, we're going to figure out what those reasons are and help you improve at Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Our hero today is Raylix. He's a Master Guardian Elite player, that's here, and his favorite fish is the Clownfish, quite possibly at that age where I watched too much Finding Nemo as a child. Nothing wrong with that, though. Great movie. And our boy Raylix had some questions about playing Inferno, and okay, we gotta stop, guys. We gotta stop, because a lot of things happening. We got, first of all, um, we got this happening. We got this happening over here. And second of all, we got this smoke. My boy, Raylix. No reason to throw that smoke. It was very strange. Um, even if he was trying to block off middle here at the start, it didn't make any sense. Uh, first of all, the terrorists aren't even going to get there that fast. Also, the CTs have a huge advantage on the first round in terms of the uh, long-ranged accuracy of the USP. Uh, let's take a quick aside right now and just talk a little bit about the USP versus the Glock. The USP and the P2000 have good tap potential at long distances and are a one-hit kill to the head without helmet at most distances. And because you can't purchase a helmet on the first round, there really isn't a reason to purchase a different pistol. Because of this, the ideal strategy is to either buy armor, which prevents against aim punch, or to have one player purchase a kit just so that you have the opportunity to defuse the bomb on the first round. The Glock, on the other hand, is not always a one-hit kill at longer distances and has worse accuracy but it does have a large magazine and burst fire mode, making it more suited to close engagements. Because of this, the ideal strategy for the CTs on pistol round is to engage at distance and take measured shots at enemies' heads, where the ideal T-side strategy is to close the distance and engage with superior numbers, overwhelming the defenders. So why bring up the difference between the USP and the Glock? Well, if he's going to smoke off mid on this round, the, then he's going to be engaging closer up with these terrorists. It allows them to go alternate middle and take position here and set up for a take. Um, whereas you'd think that they want to be engaging at long range. So we saw these two players on his team. They were trying to engage the players at mid at long range, but his smoke actually prevented his teammates from doing that. And then he goes and he says, okay, I'm going to take this same duel. Notice this. Every, um, every player has bought stuff on this round, but nobody has purchased armor on the CT side. Now, this is a pre-made team, uh, so I'm allowed to be very critical about the teamwork and the buying decisions of the team, which is very lovely because we get to talk about these topics. So no armor on the pistol round is just a little bit goofy. You're, you're really allowing those terrorists to have uh, kind of a leg up on this one. And notice they've already used all of their throws. Everything that they had has already been thrown, and we're at 1 minute and 33 seconds. Second thing I noticed... Um, is that our boy Raylix, we gotta give him some props, he is not rocking the D's Nuts tag. And you know, I have to respect that. He saw his whole team doing the D's Nuts thing, he's like, you know, that's kind of a dead meme, it's not very funny, I'm gonna go my own way, you guys can do your D's Nuts, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stand out, I'm gonna be a man. So as the round progresses, the terrorists do move into bombsite B, and they are able to take it. So it'll put us uh, pretty shortly here into a three versus three. And we saw that Raylix uh, and his buddy Spitfire kind of moved around to check for any uh, lurks there in order to set up for the retake. And we had another one of their teammates rotate to help out with that. So nothing wrong there. That was fine. Rotate was fine. It's a little bit slow. Um, if they called like, oh, they're all taking B, then maybe they could have run down there. But they did check and see if that there was a lurk. So three versus three. This scenario, this is a possible retake. But again, they don't have any of their nades or uh, flashes left and they have no armor. So the, the T's who have armor... Uh, and have killed those players and actually take their weapons, now have a distinct advantage on this. Um, in, in a round where a 3 versus 3 retake, since it's pistol round and you're dealing with USPs and Glocks, it would have actually been the other way around, where the CTs had a good chance of retaking it. Now it's going to be a tough retake. So you can see how those decisions at the very start of the round can really impact you greatly. So here they go now, trying to move in and retake the bomb site. Uh, we see their buddy goes down over there, but we see that, oh, boom, this guy... Um, D's Nuts Spitfire is running in and fragging noobs and stuff. So Reflex is like, how can I assist my teammate? How can I be a good player here and help my teammate? And he uh, blocks the crap out of him. Now notice that Spitfire was trying to, to strafe to the left as he was fighting this guy, get out of the line of fire and stuff. Uh, Reflex runs, looks at the same position that he was looking at and blocks him. Now that's called a block, guys. If you, if you do that, it ain't good. Spitfire right now is thinking, all right, you come into my kitchen... I'm trying to reach over and get my saute. You're standing in the way. I'm going to take you down. So Spitfire kind of backs off a little bit. Um, what could have been done a little bit differently there? Maybe Reflex could have looked to the right. Since his buddy died, he knew that there was a terrorist over there. And Spitfire was kind of watching the site right now. So he could have walked along the left wall and watched right. And they would have been watching both positions. Instead, he looks in the same position and gets taken out. And oh, what did he get taken out by? 
It's that deagle. It's the deagle that he just picked up. The uh, T's member, they didn't buy any guns. They didn't buy any deagles. It's the deagle he picked off off the guy he killed over there. So all in all, this round was a complete disaster. And I hope everybody watching this could learn and hopefully make better uh, decisions. It was all just decision making here. We now move on to round number three. The counter terrorists were able to win round number two and take back that economic momentum. So this buy from them is actually really smart. We got two UMPs. We got three rifles. This happens again where he starts running B side. And it's like, oh, okay, guys, all right, I, uh, I guess I'll take A then. And that happened on the first round as well. So a little bit of miscommunication there. You've lost a little bit of time, and he's not really there to support Bure at middle. And Bure, uh, the boss that he is, says, I'm going to... I'm gonna go down mid and try and one digs these noobs. Well, he gets taken out. I think that you were trying to flash for him to say, like, I'll flash mid for you uh, so that you can go for the pick. He's already just going for the pick. Weird miscommunications. That flash is pointless. Doesn't really do anything. So so now uh, you're playing mid a little bit more. Like, let's throw another one. Let's throw another one out there. And uh, now that flash is cleared. So one minute and 33 seconds, and you have used all of your nades. You're at the point now where, I mean, look at, he's got a deagle even. Um, in his inventory. Maybe that was from last round. Maybe he bought a deagle then and, and saved it onto this round, but still. Um, the nades are super important, so if you could take one thing away, if you could take one thing away uh, from this video in terms of how to improve, it is to use your utility, use your nades sparingly so that you can use them when you actually need to use them for a situation. Never just throw flashes. Always have a purpose for the flash that you throw. Those two flashes didn't really do much. The first one may have helped his teammate, um, if he had called it and said, let's coordinate, so I'll flash so you can peek or something like that. But we're at 1 minute and 33 seconds, and it's all gone. It's just all gone. And that, that's what was happening on the first round as well with this team. Uh, except for that Maltov right now in his vision, slowly rolling away down middle that was on his teammate. So terrorists have now pushed into bombsite B. He's going to rotate. Um, oh, he didn't pick it up. Oh, no. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that poor Maltov, man. You see the incendiary just sitting here, lonely in the corner? Didn't even pick up the Maltov. All right, so when you're in a situation like this, he had questions about how to retake B. Um, when the terrorists just move in like that and just, oh dear, and that you didn't see that, and just like plow down all of your teammates and they don't even trade, so it's five people in the site, and you have to retake it with two, now is the time to save, guys. Now it's time to just fall back and hide, or go for exits. Um, it, since the economy is really close, this is actually a good scenario where you want to survive, but getting some exit kills is also a really good idea. So um, it's up to you whether you want to save or go for exits, but you don't go for this. It's dumb to go for this. Uh, it really was your teammate's fault to not be able to hold this off properly, or at least trade, and... Uh, they were able to just burst right in there. And also, guess what? If you want to retake B, so the questions you had about retaking B were, uh, how do I do it? They already have, they're already in there. They got this crossfire here. Um, how do I do it? Well, if you still had your smokes and flashes, like if you still had a flash and a smoke, you could take it like you're taking it normally, right? Like, let's say you had one guy with you and there are only three guys in the site. Like, you're in a 3v3 retake scenario. You throw the same, the same throws you would throw to take it in the first place, right? You could throw that smoke. Um, if you have this player coming from this side, you probably don't want to throw that smoke. You could throw a smoke right here so that you guys could even push out. And then you can also, like, kind of sandwich this area and take control of this side. And then you can uh, flash in or even flash over here as you're pushing in. But just save that utility so that you have something for the retake. At this point, you just want to save. And he's going to go for it here and just get killed. Well, that is a huge loss. That is a massive loss. And we know some of these SMG players on the T side will be able to go take that SMG as they leave. So you actually, you didn't just hurt yourself and your team. You benefited the other team by going for this. He's dicking around in the spawn again, Raylix. What are we going to do with you? Now, it was your teammate's fault because, well, he starts going B again, then runs back. Done that nearly every round. Wasted a bunch of time. Uh, gets over here to his spot finally at the arch side. Notice there is... A, uh, a smoke down so you know they could potentially push you there on the left side and you won't have any backup you won't have any cover you don't have somebody playing arch right now who could actually help you in fact your teammates fell back to the site so right now it kind of would make more sense to fall back um, instead he's like damn you chicken I'm gonna burn you man I want some fried chicken throws his Molotov down on that on that bad boy Oh, sees that guy jumping so right now in your mind is like okay there are people there there are people close left what do I do um, I guess the worst thing you do is just kind of to 
to peek them like this. So you've wide peeked as well, so these two guys are gonna take you down. Um, you know, let's hop in game and talk a little bit more about this specific scenario, because there's a lot that happened in such a short period of time. I wanna talk about playing this position more. Come on, okay. Come on. Come on. I'm a counter terrorist, and I wanna hold Archway on Inferno. So we're on the CT side. Uh, we saw that the other team had thrown that smoke down right there. So if you're playing this position, and you see that smoke down, it's like, well, my teammates can't help me now. I'm kind of screwed. He kind of stayed here. He fought. He was able to get a kill. And I, I kind of liked the Molotov he threw. The Molotov was fine. He threw it kind of like right there. I would run, buddy. I would move just a little bit in case that spreads. Oh. So that's fine. Like, what he can do when that goes down is he can kind of fall back and get the heck out of here. And you can fall back to a position like this. This is a nice spot. Or like right here. Or move a little bit further back like this. Uh, one thing I didn't see him do when he was playing the archway position was really rotate very much anywhere. He kind of stayed in this spot the whole time and thought, like, this is how we play it. I play from here, right? I can't let him get by this area. But it's okay to fall back and let them have certain positions if it means you can set up a crossfire with your teammates. So that smoke down, Molotov down, you could fall back. Um, the good part about archway is you're kind of like a rotate player. So you can go over to B really quickly, and you can get over to A really quickly if you need to. One thing I never really saw him do was, was move over in a position like this. Even from here, you can watch people entering. You can't really fight them because of this box unless they get all the way by. Um, and you can watch people coming porch as well. And you can even run up by this box here and watch the entrance and watch porch. I never really saw him do any of that or, or just stay right here. Um, now, what he did do when he was fighting these guys, threw the Molotov down, got the kill. He knew there was a guy close left. And we know this guy likes to use his, uh, his utility, but you should only use your utility... Um, when you know it's going to do something, like for a purpose. Everything you throw should have a purpose. So he could have done one of these. Could have fallen back a little bit like this, done one of these, and done one of those, and flashed them around the corner as he peeked. Um, the other thing is like how he peeked. He went like wide peek like this, and moved all the way out, way into the open. Um, that's not always a great idea because he exposed himself to two different players and in fact the player could have been right here as well when he pushed out. So he exposed himself from a bunch of different angles and I think it makes a lot more sense to try to play like this and uh, fight only one guy at a time, you know? So instead of when you peek, don't come all the way out here, just peek like one area at a time, right? And do like that. And he may I think he would have fared a little bit better there even if he did decide to engage them. So again, like fall back. Throw one of these out there. Look at that. Whoop ow. Right? Then he can do a little bit of a wide peek, though. I mean, you get the flash out, then it's okay to just be like, get, get wrecked, noobs. Get wrecked. I haven't done a matchmaking academy in a while, guys. I hope you like this show. I think you do. Everybody was asking for it, so it's back. Thank you folks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. Uh, big thanks to Raylix for sending in this demo. Um, I get a lot of demos from you guys, and some of them are people trying to show off, saying like, uh, hey, what did I do wrong on this round? It was a 1v5, and I only killed four. I'm so bad! Um, this was a genuine demo that Raylix sent in. He really was looking for pointers on how to improve. And I hope, I know I can be a little harsh in these videos, that's kind of the style, but I hope I really helped you improve. It's Counter-Strike. We're used to that kind of harsh, um, that harshness, you know? We have a good time, though. We have a good time. Thank you, Raylix. That was your owl vision, buddy? I let people choose their own owl vision, and this was the round he picked. Um, I don't think he meant to pick this. Let me look for something better. You're listening to the smooth sounds of W-A-R-O-W-L. Smooth Jazz. I'm your host, Big Dog Warren Fowler, and I still have no closer. I can't say that off the top of my head. It's so dumb.